Hey everyone! So similar to other people on your feed right now, I also got a Switch Lite, and I gotta say, it's a lot lighter than I was expecting, hence the name. Duh. I got a lot to say about this system, but I don't think it's fair to review it until I've had maybe a couple weeks spent with it, just so I can get the full Switch Lite experience. But in the meantime, I want to talk about accessories available for this thing at launch, and whether they're worth your money or not. I also want to try out older accessories for the original Switch and see if they're still compatible with the Switch Lite or not, and maybe save some existing owners a couple bucks. So this video is kind of a two for one deal. You might save some money, you might spend some money. It all depends on you. So as you can tell, I bought a lot of accessories, so this video would not have been possible without today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based collection RPG that's dominating the mobile gaming market. Over 10 million players have downloaded the game worldwide in under 6 months, and has almost a perfect score on the Google Play Store with over 300,000 reviews. And the best part? It's free to play! In Raid, you can summon heroes to defeat the Dark Lord in the main campaign, or use them to fight against players all over the world in the PvP arena. The game has amazing graphics and details on champions, and allows you to personally customize each one by equipping artifacts and selecting new masteries to make the build you want. This is actually my favorite part of the game, powering up my champions, then retrying missions to try to get 3 stars on each one. The game is growing super fast, and the highly anticipated Faction Wars is now live, placing champions from a specific faction in Crypt Battles. New players also get a new, awesome rewards program that nets them a daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description and click on the referral link to get started. You'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Good luck, and I'll see you there! So first things first, I'm gonna start with my regular old PSA. BUY A DAMN GLASS PROTECTOR! They're like six bucks! This one I got on Amazon. It was six dollars, and it came with four of them. In fact, these are easier to install than the ones on the original Switch, because those had little ridges for where the speakers are. But this... It's like a rectangle, you just put it on and you're done. So... More than ever, since this is a portable system you're always going to be taking around somewhere, not just in the dock, you need a screen protector more than ever, and I highly, highly recommend you getting one. The link to buy them is in the description. In fact, every accessory I'm going to go over today, all of the links are in the description if you want to buy them for yourself. Next, you're going to want this little thing, a microSD card. Even if you think you're only going to buy physical games, you're still going to want one of these because a lot of games require downloads. 32 gigs on the Nintendo Switch is not enough, and you're going to run out eventually. For example, I just bought Spyro the other day, and this game does not come complete on the cart. There's just straight up a 9 gigabyte download that you have to do. There's some games that come in double packs, and one of the games on the double pack will need to be downloaded by itself. So for instance, 10.2 here does not come on the cart, so you gotta download that, I think it's over 10 gigs. And then there's just other games that have a lot of frequent updates, and that update data stays on your console. So with these three games alone, I have almost exhausted the entire internal storage in the Switch. I said in a previous video that the minimum you want is a 64 gig microSD, but now that there's more games that keep requiring downloads, I'd recommend at the lowest 128 gigs. Now luckily, microSD cards are always going down in price. So when I made a video a year ago, um, 128 microSD was around 20 bucks if you find a really good sale. Now that's just the standard price of it on Amazon, so luckily you aren't gonna break the bank with this. That said, if you are an existing owner and you have a ton of games or plan on downloading just tons of games, I would recommend a 400 gig microSD, which usually, as of this video, runs around 50 to 60 bucks. Also, it's just kind of amazing, like, this is almost half a terabyte in this little thing. We've come, like, such a long way. Remember when you had to get, like, those giant hard drives? Anyway... So unlike the original Switch, I really think this is all you need to get started. Besides, you know, buying video games, but you already knew that. <laughs> so next I'm gonna go over accessories from the original Switch that still work with the Switch Lite. Also, I'm doing this before the Lite accessories because I'm gonna reference some of these later in the video. So, let's start with the speed round. The original Switch dock does not work. The Lite's analog sticks get in the way and it can't go all the way in. A Switch portable dock with no siding? still doesn't work because the angle is different on the ridge and it doesn't fit in right. What about a third party plug? I've heard it just charges the system, but honestly I'm kind of scared to put that in. I really do not want to fry my new system! Old switch chargers? Yes, they all should work. Charging stands? Also should work, including my boy, the switch charging stand, which is the best accessory ever and you all should buy it immediately. I'll talk about it again several times in this video. 
How about USB-A to USB-C data cables? Yes, they do! Which means that with this cable, any Switch-compatible controllers, headsets, keyboards, and Ethernet cables should work with the system. Old carrying cases? Well, yes, but if you don't want it wiggling around, what you could do is just put an extra Joy-Con to the left or right of it so it just stays in place. And lastly, wireless Pro controllers and Joy-Cons? Yes! Oh. Oh god, did I mess it up? Oh no. However, if you don't own a regular Switch, you will need to buy a Joy-Con charging stand or grip in order to charge them. Now usually this stand cost me around $25, but I found one on Amazon that's pretty well reviewed for around $12, so the link to that's in the description. Pro controllers also take the same cable as the Nintendo Switch, so you'll already have that covered if you have a Switch Lite. Now if you like the custom shells that I have on these controllers, they're from Extreme Rate on Amazon, and I love them. If you're looking for a fun DIY project, the Pro Controller usually takes around half an hour, while the Joy-Con shells take around maybe three to four hours. The reason this takes a while is because you have to disassemble the whole thing. And while the Pro Controller is kind of easy, there's just like three or four big parts in there, the Joy-Con has three parts each. So it does, it takes a while to unscrew and screw everything back in. That said, I think this is a DIY project that anyone can do. All you have to do is just very carefully follow the directions and you only need screwdrivers to do it and the shells come with all the tools you need. Just be sure to do it on a day where you have a lot of patience because there's always a chance you might just miss a step. Stuff oh happens. Oh my god, I'm a f***ing idiot! I screwed together the old shell with the new shell. Yeah, that was a little embarrassing. If you don't want the color red, there's also some other ones to choose from on the listing, including ones that kind of have that Switch Lite aesthetic. If I didn't choose red, I would probably have chosen the light blue or the light green. I'm going to put the tutorial and the links to buy the shells in the description, and I want to thank Extreme Rate for sending these out to me, because now my controllers match the backplate of the Switch that I sat on. <laughs> it's an embarrassing story, don't ask. Okay, so that's all the existing accessories that I can think of. If there's any that you think I missed, let me know in the comments and I'll try it if I have it. So let's talk about what y'all came here for. All the new accessories that you can buy for the light. And I've organized these in sections, and first off are protectors. So the first one we have here is the Duraflexi protector from Hori. Dur Duraflex, is that even a word? It's kind of like a silicone case, but it seems to keep its shape more when you bend it. And also it's clear, so that means that it won't intrude with any of the colors that you get for the Switch Lite. You'll still be able to see those colors pretty well through the case. I bought this thing for 15 bucks. When you put it on, it does feel like it provides an adequate amount of protection for the system. Like if you drop it, I think this would absorb most of the shock. However, it's not super easy to take on and off. So I feel like if you were to buy this, mm, it would be something that you would keep on the console at all times. Also, the Duraflexi protector is not to be confused with the screen and system protector, which if you look at it at first glance, you'd think, okay, this is just the same thing, but this one has a screen protector. Nope, they're entirely different. Man, I almost filmed this video without getting this thing in the mail, and I am so glad I waited. This thing is awesome. So not only is this case made of harder plastic, it covers the front of the system as well as the back. And it has a secret feature that is not really advertised that well on it. It's got a kickstand! Now I think the case does look a little tacky compared to the Duraflexi one because you got these like holes where all the buttons are. But this one has a major advantage over it and that is you can split the case in half and take it out in like 5 seconds. Watch! Oof. I know that looked very violent, but it's, I don't think it scratched my switch. Yeah, it's fine. We're good. So yeah, I think both of the protectors are pretty good options. I would personally probably use the screen and system protector one more just because of the extra functionality and protection, but the Duraflexi one does look better on the system overall in my opinion. So it's really a thing of preference. Next up are a couple of grips that I bought. Now, in my opinion, the Switch Lite is more comfortable to hold than the original Switch, but everyone's hands are different, hence the market for these things. Also, the experience isn't perfect by itself. For instance, I have issues playing Mario games on the Switch Lite because you have to hold Y and B for run and jump, but my thumb goes all over the right analog stick while I do that, and it's kind of annoying. So when I put the Switch Lite inside of a grip, it elevates my thumb to a point where I don't hit that right analog stick anymore. So if you find yourself uncomfortable with the light in any way, here's some options for you. 
So I got this $15 one, which sounded cool on paper. It matches like the color of the light and can also hold two game cards. And that's until I, I got it. What does the box say? For N-Switch Lite, high purity imported TPU raw materials? N-Switch. So first off, this just does not match. This, these aren't the same color. So that's, we're off to a bad start here. Okay, so I just realized the game cart holders are on the inside too. So in order to use them, you have to disassemble the whole case. So let's try it in theory. Okay. I mean, putting it on wasn't terrible, but I mean, look at this color scheme. It's like... Looks like mold. So let's disassemble it and get the games out. Come on. Well, the games didn't fall out, so that's good. I guess, I guess this kind of works. <laughs> let's see, if I tap it, does it come out? Yes. So yeah, overall I don't think this case was a very good idea. Also, I feel like the grips are kind of subtle and they don't really help with the experience very much. So yeah, maybe if you're getting this for a kid it'd be worth it, but then at that point just get the screen protector because those even have just as subtle grips on them. So I don't really see a point to this. There's also other cases like this that instead have the game card holder behind the system, but uh, that's a risk you're gonna have to take. <laughs> I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna buy another one of these, man. So next we have a better grip for the same price by a company called... Heat Fun? It has room for all my fingers and I think it feels pretty decent overall. I kinda wish the grips were a little wider, but this really is pretty comfortable. I like it. But before we move on, I think I found the best one of them all so far. And it is called the Oivo Grip Case. So not only is this a grip, it has room for four game card slots here, and doubles as a kickstand, which when you're not using it, clips onto the top of the Switch light. That is so cool. Out of the three grips I bought, I think this is the one I'm gonna use the most, but that doesn't mean it's without its caveats. So that stand I talked about is pretty cool, but the problem is it's not as sturdy as I would have liked. It takes a couple of tries to get it to stand up correctly, and otherwise it'll just fall flat. So I kind of wish there was more resistance like the Switch charging stand, but it's not a bad stand by any means. Another weird thing is that my Switch light gets like this black residue sometimes when I take it off the grip. And it's not like damaging the system or anything, it's just something that you have to rub off every once in a while, and it gets a little annoying. And third, while I think ergonomic grips worked really well on the original Switch, where one side is bigger than the other, it doesn't work as well on the Switch Lite in my opinion because your thumb is even closer to the buttons that you're trying to reach, which means that you have to bend your thumb more. Now for some reason I was born with comically small thumbs, so I think I'm fine, but if this case looks uncomfortable to you, it probably is and you were probably better off getting the heat fun one. Or... Satisfy, which is the company that made my favorite original Switch grip, is making one for the Switch Lite as well. It looks more comfortable than the Oivo grip because there's more space between your thumb and the buttons, but it's not out at the time of this video so I can't tell you myself. It also comes in a much lighter color than the original, and I think that matches the aesthetic of the light very well, but be prepared to pay a premium. It's $10 more than the Oivo grip, so it really comes down to what you want and if you're willing to wait. I'll put the link to pre-order it, or maybe buy it depending on when you're watching this video, in the description below. Next up we got charging stands! I'll start with this one, I call it the no frills one. So I've been using this one for about a year now. The whole thing behind it is that it's very very sturdy, it's made of metal, it can fold really well, so you can fit it in any bag you want, and also it fits other things like phones and tablets, and you can also fish a cable through it and plug it in from the bottom, which is cool. So, it was 14 bucks, links in the description, and I love it, it's on my desk at all times. Next up is, you guessed it, I'm gonna talk about this again, the Switch Charging Stand. This thing is $20, and basically you just plug it in at the bottom of the system, and then you plug out your AC adapter from the side. Or, if you have a USB A to C data cable, you can just plug it in on the side, and then plug in any of the USB A accessories that you want. I should probably clarify by now, USB A is like the rectangle plug that you usually see in your computers, while USB C is the reversible one that the Switch uses, and you probably see sometimes for phones. So, just to clarify, you're plugging things into this. <laughs> anyway, it's great, it's super tiny, it's $20, and I think it should still come with all the systems, but, you know, we can't, we can't have everything in life. 
And third, we have a charging stand that was made for the Switch Lite, but also works with the original Switch. It's called the Dual USB Play Stand from Hori. So this is $30, and it's like the Switch charging stand, but unfortunately, it only does one angle. It, you can kind of try to get other ones, but it's basically going to fall to that angle every time. And that makes me sad, because it kind of puts it behind the charging stand for me. So yeah, I would only recommend buying this if you plan on charging the system and using an accessory at the same time. But otherwise, I would just buy a charging stand and a USB data cable, because both of those combined are still cheaper than this thing. And you get versatility because you can use that data cable without needing a stand. So, you got a lot of options. So, really, it depends for charging stands what you want to get out of it. And last but not least, we got cases. I like gray, okay? So despite the same color, I think I got some good variety here. Each one provides a different amount of things you can put inside of it. So it really will depend on how much you want to bring with you all the time. Also, if you're buying a Switch Lite, I'm under the assumption that you want a somewhat slim or light case that you can take with you. So I chose slim ones for all three. The first one I have here is pretty no frills. It's $11 and all it does literally, it holds the system. <laughs> There's no extra pockets or anything, so if you literally just want a hard case to put your light in, and you want it for cheap, this is probably the best option. Next up, if you're looking for a softer case, you probably want something called a pouch case. Or as I like to call them, burrito cases. Because you just... Ah. Uh... This one I got from GameStop for $13. I'm not really a big fan of the whole mesh material, but inside there's a little pouch you can put your headphones or your game cards in if you really want to stuff it in there. So, it's pretty good. This is probably the one I would choose if I'm wearing shorts and I just want to stuff the Switch Lite in my pocket. Hori also has two pouches you can choose from online. There is a slim pouch, which is basically the same thing as this one and the same price, but the zipper is on the outside. Or there is the Hori Tough Slim pouch for $17, which gives you more wiggle room for like more cables and headphones and game cards, if you just want something where you can store more things inside. This is also a good time to mention the Tough Slim pouch and the no frills case that I talked about earlier will fit a switch with a protector in pretty easily. The other ones, it's going to be a pretty tight fit. So just a word of advice. But let's talk about my personal favorite. This is the Tom Tok hard shell case that I had for my original switch. It was the slimmest hard shell case that I could find. And it also has a little bit of character because you can see like these little pop outs for where the analog sticks and the buttons are. It's cute. Well, it is till y'all told me on Twitter that this thing looks like a switch caked in dust. But I still love them. Don't let them hear that. But when I heard they were making an identical one for the Switch Lite, look at this. I couldn't help myself. So inside, there's no real pouch for headphones or cables. But usually what I do, on top of where you can store up to eight game card slots, I just put that cable right on top of there so it doesn't touch the system. And it still seems to fit in just fine. But yeah, this case goes for $17 and I highly recommend getting it. I also didn't know, fun fact, until I was researching for this video, the reason these bumps are here aren't just for it to look cool, they're also to prevent shock damage if you drop the case, specifically for the buttons and the analog sticks. It's really good! I love this thing! Now don't talk to me or my son ever again. But with those cases out of the way, I want to talk about one more case. Something I consider the holy grail of Switch Lite accessories. Something that's not even out yet and you have to import it because it's not even confirmed for North America. You gotta get it from UK, Australia, or Japan. The flip cover! The idea behind this cover is that you literally flip it open and you're still able to play the console with the cover still on. And whenever you're done, you just flap it back on and put it back in your pocket and keep going. It's beautiful! Like, that's perfect! I know you can't store any, like, game cards or anything in it, but that's, like, the perfect amount of protection you need, and it's just as, like, portable as it is, like, in your pocket. Like, that's so cool! I want it really bad. I want it to the point that if someone made a similar product on Amazon, I would buy it there, too. <laughs> it's such a good idea. So, yeah, that's all the accessories that I have for this video. Is there anything that you saw today that you would want to buy for yourself? Or if you already own a Nintendo Switch and you plan on buying a light, which accessories do you think you'll reuse? And are there any Switch Lite accessories that I missed today that you think are really cool? Let me know all of the above in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. If you like what you saw today, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing for more Nintendo content. Like I said earlier, I'm working on an extensive Switch Lite review, so hopefully you're looking forward to that. So I was originally going to talk about one more accessory that I bought from Five Below. It was literally this like neck brace thing where you can just like hold your Switch here. It works with the original Switch, like it clamps on there, 
But this thing's too freaking tiny! So it doesn't fit in right, so... Now I'm just really concerned about using it, because it's gonna fall right on the rails. Also, I look like an idiot. The, the idea is you just, like, walk around your room, and you just play your Switch like this. Isn't that cool? I love gaming! 